Can you hear me okay? I can't hear you. Do you have no audio? Hold on. Say something now. Your audio, I can't hear a word you're saying. Hold on. Is your mute on? Is your mute on? Maybe. Mute, I check. Your mute was uh, Oh, that's a fancy so looking house. So I guess I guess I had to join the audio, then unmute. The auto mutes for some reason. Hmm. It's for all the pornos you watch. Probably. Keep it on. <laughs> I, know, I know that trick. <laughs> so um, hey, we're just gonna begin. This is my 47th episode of Brett's with Friends. And I am wow. with, uh, I'm with uh, Brando McClure. Uh, he is an old friend from the Venice days. We're going to cover some lots of ground today. Welcome to the show, Mr. Brando McClure. Thank you. Glad to uh, be on the show. The Brett Cheers. Wood Show. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I'll have to make myself a drink in a minute. Yeah, we can do that. Are, are you in a laptop or are you in like a, on a phone? Uh, I've, I've got a phone. Okay. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a better camera than my laptop has. Uh, what makes a better camera? Like, is it the chip? I thought it was a chip that makes it better. Like, the bigger the, the card. And the lens. Ah. It's the lens and the chip. It's a chip lens. Lens, chip, 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 chip. Combo. Um, it's a combo. Um, yeah, I want to, I mean, I want to do that. I have a DSLR and I heard through my friend Elise London, who is a tech uh, and shooter and editor and all that. Did she, you know, you can put your DSLR through the, through the laptop to shoot it from that as well. I don't know how to do that. There's software that you connect it together with. Ah. So the, the, the camera acts as, you know, a camera, as long as you have the uh, firmware and the drivers installed on your laptop, then, and then use different, there's different pieces of software you can use to tether that together. And would it come in the same format? Would it be in the same block format, like uh, through the Zoom, I guess? Yeah, but yeah. Zoom's locked into that aspect ratio, so. Okay, yeah, um, I like that aspect ratio. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> Standard. Maybe a little bit higher. I want to, okay, we, okay, so we've gotten a little, we started off a little fast here. Tell the people out there, like, what is exactly that you do, do? Uh, well, I mean, generally, I'm an artist. I just uh, I have a lot of video art, uh, mashups, video mashups, video editing. Um, my bread and butter is working art department uh, in the film industry, film, television, commercials, music videos, print. I've been doing VR more recently. Um, I've also worked a lot of post production for video game industry and film and television. Uh, post for distribution, you you name it, from pre production to post production, everything. <laughs> and can we talk about the project that you just got through working on that I saw you with the level of my life, Malene Ackerman? Can we? Oh, uh, Mal yeah, man, Malin Ackerman. Um, oh. Can't say too much about it, uh, but we uh, we shot with her and uh, Lorenza Itso. Um, uh, formerly uh, married to Eli Roth. She's in a couple of his films, most recently Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, and she's amazing to work with, uh, you know, that as being, being the only art department person on set because we're filming rugged in the desert and uh, uh, long, you know, long hours, a lot of overnights as well because it's a thriller, uh, psychological thriller film, uh, psychedelic elements, kind of like uh, Mandy. I don't know if you've seen that yet. I've I've heard of it. I know it's a horror film sort of thing. Yeah, but it's it's psychedelic. Like, it's one of Nicolas Cage's best performances. Anyway, I can. I oh, is that the one where the, they they have the the sort of the and, uh, yeah the one that is all is independent and it, he uh, his daughters it's very psychological and his daughters in there is a is a relationship between their their family and this this uh, thing mm -hmm. this fungus that's growing. No, that's a different film. That's based on an H.P. Lovecraft story. Uh, Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, color the color of the sky or space. Uh, or... I, I the title. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, the, the color of space, maybe. Yeah, I think we'll just. I'll yeah. put it a little. I'll put a little they, like graphic of it. They came out around the same time. They both have a very uh, similar visual look. 
So, you know, watching the trailers back to back, you might, you know, think it was the same film maybe, but no, Mandy's uh, next, next level. Uh, it's the same director as Beyond the Black Rainbow. Ooh. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you ever ended up seeing uh, Hyper Futura with Eric Kopatz starring. Uh-oh. No, I didn't. Well, I think he yeah. definitely took some ideas from my Splitting and Vinny script for that. Uh, but uh, we yeah. were in my room at the time. He never let me it's, near exactly. that set. He let me ne- never yeah. let me near that set. So he, so, he, so he had been bouncing ideas off of you around that same time, right? Wrote the, we wrote the poem that then the script was based on, right? And I, I wish you guys had co-wrote it because then it maybe would have made a little more sense. <laughs> well, I, uh, I have a, this is interesting. You're opening up a Pandora's box here because I, um, and for the audience that doesn't know who Eric Kopatz is, he was a roommate of mine a while back with his, um, when 20 we were, years ago, when we were Airbnb before it was Airbnb. Uh, right. Him and Erica Strauss, who's a t- very talented uh, glass uh, artist herself. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, he, yeah, he gave me every day I'd wake up, he gave me the commentary to my life. He narrated <laughs> the narration of my life. I was living, living with him was maybe like living in the Truman Show. And, yeah. uh, and uh, <laughs> with an audience of one. With an audience of one. And uh, nobody would ever believe it if they saw it. Uh, besides that, yeah. Um, yeah, I never I your past because I was working on Splitty Infinity with Eric, uh, not with Eric, but with uh, Ethan Sage. So I, had, right. I was working on Splitty Infinity, which is a feature film, and we we're discussing these. All in it. So I never saw uh, Eric Kopatz's movie. I said, did see the trailer. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, recently, so I don't think I don't think he'll ever talk to me. He doesn't. He, he's very obtuse. He doesn't look like he straight at me. He doesn't look. He looks around me. No, at, at, you know, after that film, uh, you know, once we once we had everything in the in the can, I started editing it, and I spent two and a half years off and on editing it. So, at the end of that process, I don't think he'll ever talk to me again either. He's doing us a favor, uh, you know. So, okay, so recently, um, some auteurs in India, I uh, took the film, re-edited it a little bit, totally changed the sound design and soundtrack. And then overdubbed it amazingly. In, 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 in Indian? In, in Hindi. In Hindi. So, yeah. yeah. So there's Tamil, Kamil, you know, Punjabi, right? So so it's in it's in Hindi and it takes the film to another level. Seeing it through the lens. Um, How much of those ideas in that movie were mine? That's a good question. I'll look at this movie. Send me a link to this fucking movie. Yeah, you gotta see. I bet you. I I definitely know exactly what's going on with this. (laughs) Eric Kopatz is spinning. His ears are on fire right now. Somewhere his ears are on fire. Well, here's here's the thing as well is that I I took a lot of influences like altered states, for instance, and then my own my own video installations where I I use a Mondrian style, breaking the image up into multiple frames on screen and having those move around. Also, not even just rectangles, but different shapes. I, I, that's part of my vi- my video art. Um, so I incorporated that into the film, and I, through that, I was able to tell some stories that you know, or, you know, tell some stories without dialogue that weren't necessarily in the script. You so made it a better movie. Handle, it sounds like. What's that? It sounds like you really sculpted it into a better movie. I tried. But then uh, there were certain things that him and the director just didn't uh, weren't weren't listening to me on. That when I talked to other editors and other uh, directors about the structure, uh, it, it made sense uh, for the audience. Whereas the way they want to do it just loses you. It loses you after like twelve minutes, you know. And it's only an hour long film. It's a sixty-two minute film with credits. You guys so, had me in on that, man. You guys, yeah, I, I didn't, even know, I, I didn't even know it was being made, and I found out I, later. I brought it up. Okay. I brought it up twice. I wasn't that involved either, at least for the filming part of it. It was more the editing. You know, it's like Post. I was like, "Well, bring me what you guys have, and let me see what I can do with it." And I incorporated a lot of um, uh, stock footage that I had uh, uh, been gathering based on the script. You know. Uh, uh, 16 millimeter footage that I shot off. I did poor man's telecine and shot it off the screen. And uh, I tried to put as much of that into it as well. 
Um, it was passed on to two other editors afterwards to revert back to the edits that the directors wanted. Nice. Um, future past. Future, so the original yeah. one was future past. Yeah, future past. Future past. Yeah. Past. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, it, was, it, it feels like it was yesterday. It was every two day. Decades. <laughs> two decades. We are living in future past. Um, we are. <laughs> so, what? So you sold it, and and are you? Were you a producer on that? And this because you took such a no, hard no, no, not at all. Um, they, you know, last minute they wrangled me in to play uh, a character called the Specialist, who is really? basically uh, projecting images into the minds of the test subjects to manipulate them one way or another, uh, working for a doctor, um, and, and mean, then- just giving away the plot. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't give it away, no, no spoilers, come on. I, I think that I could tell you the entire synopsis in, you know, over the course of like 10 minutes and you'd still be confused watching it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, you know. <laughs> Plot schmot. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so, so you then, guys... then later on, later on, they're like, well, uh, we need somebody to edit this. And I, I stepped forward because I, I'd worked on two documentaries uh, with the DP, um, Alma McDonald. For him, it was an exercise in using his new camera, you know, and getting, getting used to that before he could, you know, actually. What camera was it shot on? It was a Sony HVX 300. I want to say it was a 720p, uh, uh, 720p HD camera. Yeah. And that's probably the best or similar, close to the best of, I think I had a Sony. Sony's had their, the, the, they're known for the lenses. Yeah. Uh, those ones, but um, it, well, and he had, he had that's a mini DV, lens. right? It's, that's a mini DV. No, it was after mini DV. Uh, they used a specific Sony data card. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's, uh, it's, a, it's like a proprietary data card, it's basically an SD card. You know? Yeah, but that's probably but when they were the, first coming out. But, but the codec the video used was a pain in the ass to convert, and then it was pretty much impossible to convert on Mac. So I, I built a separate PC to like work on that, and then I ended up working for a post house editing studio on Washington Boulevard, and uh, ended up getting to use a lot of their computers to finish up the edit. Uh, for a for a low rental price because I was I was working on that so uh, yeah it was a long process but uh, I'm glad that people halfway across the world decided it was uh, worth overdubbing and, and uh, redo the the soundtrack <laughs> yeah. yeah I want to see it send me a link or something or I at least get a copy of that shit it's it's fascinating <laughs> um are you still in touch with Eric Kopatz no not since that film that's what I was saying I don't I don't think He'd ever talk to me again after finishing it in that film. That was 10 years ago. Well, I think you'd take this as a compliment if he's ever going to see this, which I doubt he'll ever sit, sit through this or see this, which he should. That he, is one he, weird he, motherfucker. Absolutely. <laughs> it's such a character. And, you know, I, I, he's funny. Really, I, love I, him. I really like his performance. I, you had seen Bastard. It was the same director, James O'Brien. Uh, he, he directed that movie? Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. Uh, Eric. Now that you say that, he he had ties to that, but I didn't believe him. Um, he, he he did it to get back in the saddle and directing because I don't think he. I think he'd done like maybe a road trip movie or something in between. You know, like he he hadn't really directed much since night. He's got a fancy name. He sounds like a director. Yeah, yeah. He's got a director's yeah. name. And he's got a director's name. Um. I'll have to see yeah, this movie. We do a western that was that was uh, pretty fun. Uh, What's the name of that one? No, it's called Western Religion. And it oh, actually, my buddy, really... my buddy is fucking in that movie. Claude. Oh yeah. Oh, Claude. Claude's the star. Claude. Claude's the star of fucking Western Religion. Wait, you live with Claude right now? Claude, come here for oh, a second. That's hilarious. Claude. <laughs> Claude. <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 this is. <laughs> This is fucking hilarious. Okay, hold Howdy, on. Claude. Now this is we're going into a different direction. If he comes out here, Claude, come here for a second. I need you. I'm gonna get something to drink real quick. Yeah, do your thing. 
Make it quick because oh, that, you have a nice house. Come here for a second. This is um, he's making a drink, but we we're just talking. This is Brando McClure. He's making a drink right now. So, yeah, bend down so the people aren't looking at your crotch for a, a second. Is that a jukebox? Yeah, this is probably a jukebox. Okay, this is Claude. We were just talking about. And you come up. <laughs> Where are you, Brando? Come here. Come on. Jukebox. Does it work? I don't know. You got to ask him when he comes on. Oh, but he is friend. John O'Brien. Hey, Claude. Hey, Claude. Happy this, brother. This is a fan of your work. He knows you're the director, Brian uh, oh. O'Brien. I know, I know, I know Claude. Hey, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. I was thinking about that house near the beach there. Uh -huh. that house. Robin's house. No. Yeah. So yeah, he just hit, we were talking about Eric Kopatz and, and Future Pass, this movie that he edited on, and it was directed by this O'Brien guy. And, and then James O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell some stories. You guys uh, so, tell a Western religion or some sort of. You guys know each other. Well, I was gonna go. I was gonna go back to give, uh, give you Claude uh, a little background. So, so James had directed this weirdo film uh, okay. that Brett's old roommate Eric Kopatz uh, had written. He'd originally written his Future Past, and then uh, it became Hyper Future when he when he started. Uh, uh, working with James on it, and it recently got released in India. What uh, dubbed in Hindi? Wow! With um, it didn't get released. It got it got bootlegged, and then they dubbed it, and with a new soundtrack, it's like ten times better. Really? To make, really? Yeah. Really? And Brett, Brett hadn't, had only seen the trailer. I was like, no man, you got to see the Hindi version. Well, Eric it. lived with me at the time, and he and I was writing yeah. Splitting Infinity. And he was. Sage. Pinch it in script. So there was Stephen <laughs> Sage, like, and he would like uh, Eric. And Eric was fucking reading my script in, in pages, and I don't know. Anyways, this is gonna get tell or something. That were in the same <laughs> realm. He had his own ideas that were in the same realm, but it was it was funny. It was totally how, different, you know, but yeah, it was it was funny how like he he'd ask you because I was I was there. He'd he'd ask you like, well, what do you think if uh you know the, the guys came in, the men in black, and the uh, Put him in a chair and they put something in his eyeball, you know. And, you know, he'd go back, back and forth like that, like just different plot points and stuff would go back and forth. And yeah, you might uh, be the only witness to that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I lived across the street. Uh oh, you froze up. No. Oh, no. no, it must be the plane, this helicopter. No. Maybe he's just doing it on purpose. Maybe he's just freaking up. Let's try this out. No, he's gonna come back. He might have Double a freeze. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I'm perfect. <laughs> All right, it worked. Our freezing. Right. Froze you, you froze it. We, we did it we some counted. mojo. Oh, gee. Count as your freeze. With our freeze. freeze. We froze yeah. it, and now you can. <laughs> but no, okay, so, but, uh, uh, what, so, kind of, what should the people so, know about the movies that you guys worked on? They should, or, do, uh, they should do Western religion in Hindi. Yeah, yeah, it was a Western religion. I was, I was only in, uh, I was only on set for like two or three days. We were doing the um, the tournament scenes, and I was I was one of the tournament dealers. But uh, yeah, you were one of the uh, dealers, that, dealers, right? One of the dealers, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Famous stash, man. Come on. <laughs> I tried to do one of those last week. I was just trying to just. To, uh, <laughs> I, it's looking good, man. It takes a little work. We're trying. What's to, your secret? Yeah, what's the secret? You got to put some. Uh, Dax. Dax. Oh shit! I got Dax, the, the red can. I got the red. red can. Can. That's the one. Uh, just got to let it grow a bit too, but. The others are too greasy. Oh yeah, solid. Yeah. I had a pirate audition this week for uh, Tiki uh, Tiki Barber, Tiki Masala. What's his name? The guy who did Jojo Tiki Rabbit. Masala. Oh, not Tiki Taika uh, Waititi. Did you read for that? You, no, you no. That's yeah, a new pirate show. The guys from uh, what's that show? Back on the horse. The guys, the two uh, New Zealand guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, Why in the Concord? Why the Concord? Why the Concord? Yeah, no, amazing. A new amazing. pirate show, so creepy pirate. I'm not that creepy. Though. Are you allowed to talk about stuff like that? No, uh, maybe not. All right, you oh, got this is a Brett's not here. This is a Brett's with friends, friends, friends exclusive. exclusive. Oh! In any given time, there's probably five pirate shows uh, <laughs> shooting in LA. You know. <laughs> I hope so. Pirates can bring them back, man. Come on, that's stash. Got that. I mean, not much, not TV shows necessarily, but like films or you yeah. know, there's pirate stuff. <laughs> yeah, did you see Loki yet? Loki. Which, which, Loki. which? 
Loki. Oh, oh, Loki. Um, the the series, uh, the Marvel series. I saw the pilot. I saw the first episode. Yeah, good, right. Yeah, it's high production quality. High production. I was like, man, it didn't hold out nothing. That's like a movie. That, yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. And I mean, that's the future of television, right? It's uh, you, you know, and killed it. Owen Wilson, man. Just, hey, man, just you know, just, yeah, just got the hey, whatever. You, just <laughs> it's a dream role. Man. He just he's a master. Master yeah. throwing it away. Never catch him. Yeah. <laughs> so what's um um. Uh, are you going to work with each other at some point with yeah. you guys? Well, wasn't that, I would like to. Wasn't O'Brien supposed to do a pirate movie? I read it. I had an audition for a pirate thing. Yeah. So the money, you know, I don't know what the latest is, but so the the latest I heard was that the uh, executive producers that he brought in yeah. uh, that uh, in Dominican Republic oh, shit. ended up buying the script outright and want to produce it on their own down the road. Oh. So that's. Huh. So That's out. a shame. Yeah, it, it was such a good script. I thought, and yeah, you know, if you way. know, if uh, if maybe there was, you know, I, I don't know. It's it's a shame though because uh, I, I certainly put a lot of thought and effort into it, um, putting together decks and uh, yeah. uh, production budget. You know, for art department specifically, because I was I was looking at production design that shit. Um, um, Any- yeah. yeah. But uh, he's he's got two scripts that he sold in Scotland uh, to a production company out of the UK, and hopefully they let him hire some crew and do, do yeah. casting for that for those. Um, Smart guy, he'll get. There's like a power struggle with the with the within the distributor and the production company, so depends on who comes out on top whether he gets yeah. it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I like that jukebox, man. What's up with that? What do you got now? Oh, we'll it's a uh, ni- 1964 diplomat, row yeah. AMI, uh, functioning. Um, I've got, I've been making a secret playlist. Um, buddy of mine worked for uh, EM Records for years uh, in marketing, put together the original playlist. Uh, he bought it from his childhood bar up in uh, Northern California. Damn. And I uh, spent a lot of money repairing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, curated a custom playlist is amazing. Uh, yeah, it's like a uh, little box in front there, too. Man. Yeah, he's got a nice house. Rolling Stones, The Police, Journey, Robert Palmer, Peter Gabriel, Talking Heads. Nice. Oh, Buddy Holly, that guitar, John Fogarty, Van Morrison, Beatles, The Birds, The Who. Oh, and then, like, oh, you. No, so, do you, have to feed, do you have to feed it with quarters to make it operate? Uh, dimes, 1964. Ah. Man. Oh, shit. <laughs> who, put the lighting, who put the lighting in? And then, the, uh, what you look at your uh. I really like the future, uh, past look of your place. Yeah, it looks like a, <laughs> yeah. Well, Thailand. It's, oh, yeah, it's yeah. daytime, but it, in, the, in the evening, uh, in the evening, I'll do projection up on the uh, ceiling, and then I also do uh, projection here. Damn, this guy's got it down. Dude, I need to come to your house yeah, and hang out. Jesus Christ! Up. I've got one in the backyard too. Why you got a house? Does your does your pool have dolphins in it? We got a pool. <laughs> you, got a house. you got a house. hungry, hungry hippos. Wow, an actual house. What's that? You got a house with a with a yard and everything. Yeah, yeah. The the front, yeah, the front garden's really nice. Uh, Are you in LA? I'm in a duplex though. Okay. Uh, so, and and it was built in 19. What's your address? <laughs> what's your address? Okay, yeah. Coming, coming right now. No, I, I actually. <laughs> hey, yo, that'd be a fucking funny. <laughs> That's what Rick. Uh, I, I ended up in Venice? moving back into the neighborhood uh, I grew up in, uh, Miracle Mile. Oh, so I'm, I'm right. Mir- Miracle Mile South, uh, and uh, but I grew up more like Wilshire and La Brea, and I'm I'm like Olympic and La Brea between San Vicente and Olympic. So like Miracle okay. Mile South. No, no, any more information because no, you'll no, have stalkers. Uh oh. Out of our audience of right. 50 people, there might be stalkers. Well, come on back for a bit. <laughs> okay. Bring some down. Down. Right right here. Just, just drop one last name here. Just, uh, see how I'm standing yeah. here? I just remind you of the time I met Zach Efron at the Bundy uh, premiere. 
at the, but he was standing, it's like, he was standing like this the whole time. Yeah. Pretty cool. Like that's, Bundy? He got to be. <laughs> like standing like, yeah, all right, all right. You think he's, uh, he's pulling a Jay, Jared Leto or yeah, McConaughey? It's it pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right, brother. We'll see you on the next right. one. Cool, brother. Uh, Co-host uh, Claude Duhamel there. I'm glad that was hilarious. That's um, I didn't know you guys were living together. That's funny. I'm just uh, kind of traveling and kind of, kind of, I don't know, man. I've been bopping around. Let's just say that. Yeah. So I'm here for the weekend. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Um, so, okay. So I've known you for like 25 years or something like that. Met you when I lived on Dudley. Um, 20, uh, 22 years, but no, but I was, I knew you before I moved to Dudley. How because so? I would. Because I came uh, through Ben and Mo when they were working with Antoine and Philippe. Oh, so Antoine was the connection. Bo and yeah, because they were all working together in the in the garage with the studio, editing and filming. And I would come down for like you know parties and stuff, and, that and that's really funny. I, or, you know even just like hanging out back then. I mean, we we had a great we had great neighbors, great block man. You know, it was it was nice. Yeah, that was um, Spano Gallery down the down the way. Yeah, Spano Spano in the house. What year was that? Uh, ninety eight, ninety nine. Ah, oh, the sweet spot. That was, yeah, uh, Venice is amazing between ninety seven and ninety nine. Or ninety eight, it kind of we had a golden we had a golden period because we everybody was having parties. You'd yeah. walk from one place to another. Barbecues, yeah. all the fire going. It was like the uh, the uh, the inmates were running the asylum, sort of thing. A bit, a bit. We yeah. had more control. Like, what do you, have you been through Venice lately? I uh, I went to Playa del Rey most recently. I kind of I skipped past Venice, but <laughs> I've heard that I've heard it's gotten pretty bad. I mean, you know, I was living down there for twelve years, ten, ten years at Sticks and Flower there, and. Uh, by the end, I was maybe going to the beach like three times a year, you know, uh, and I was six blocks away. So it's like, yeah, that's, if you're, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, those are good. Yeah, I guess I mean, yeah, you're busy. I was, I, was okay, so there, now we have, I was skating there in, I was skating there in the eighties, in the late eighties. Yeah, yeah. You know, thirty years ago, over thirty years ago, skateboarding down there, and and then it was it was pretty trashed and fucked up uh, it, every place in LA goes through the every place anywhere goes through these cycles of like upscale downscale you know West Adams is coming up but like you know 80 years ago it was an affluent neighborhood you know yeah just the, yeah. the, ebb, and, the ebb and flow of property in Los Angeles you know yeah it's nutty okay speaking of uh uh, iconic situations. Let's talk about Aardvarks. Aardvarks on Melrose? No, the Aardvark. Not the Aardvarks. Well, no, no Aardvarks. No, the um, uh, I got uh, what's the video store? Vidiots. Vidiots. Yeah. Yeah, we got to oh, talk yeah. about this. We got to talk about this. This is where okay. we take yeah. a large section of the story because I was realizing when you when I because I was um when you well, were, I got the first job time I thought you had a job there. I was yeah. actually a little jealous. I was like, "Oh, you got a job at Vidya? What? What?" Because I'm like, "What?" <laughs> so we worked, uh, or no? Um, I started working at Vidya. Uh, on actually, it was you and Eric Kopatz that were both told me like, "You talk about film all day long. Why don't you, you know, go work with them?" And uh, yeah, it was a dream job for a couple of years. And then, and then the last year, I was doing more events and stuff. Uh, in acquisitions, um, which was cool, you know, like go to estate sales and just find piles of VHS to dig through and find those rare gems, you know. What was the, the rarest the gem you found? What was the rarest gem you found? Or Probably what you, like name a couple like, of, of second or maybe third generation boxcar Bertha that uh, Martin Scorsese directed, and it hadn't it hadn't been released. I mean, now it's been released. So many titles. Yeah, again, and, you know, made for streaming but, and DVD. but there were certain films that were like almost in the realm of let like mythical, 
you know, like because nobody had seen one for so long. Uh, it was in, in like none of the filmmakers were alive anymore and things like this that made people to believe that uh, maybe it was just in people's minds. Maybe they didn't. Oh, so just to find these these rare gems that, you know, people had, uh, you know, chalked up to be, you know, mythical films that people made up uh, it is amazing and it makes makes the hunt worth it. Um, and also be, being able to do research for all kinds of production companies from uh, uh, 40 Acres and a Mule, Band of Heart, um, Scott Free. And, you know, we, we need every film where someone opens an umbrella, and it blows out of their hands or every film where a car crashes into a fire hydrant, the water spills out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter the genre. It's just like the scene, you know, it goes beyond like looking for every film by a particular director, or even their sh student short film from college, you know, university. It's, uh, it, you know, it's what makes the, the archivist and, and, uh, uh, film historian in me jump for joy, you know, and, and yeah, Vidyots was an amazing place to, to be a part of and the events we did, you know, Dogtown and Z boys uh, with Stacey Peralta. We did style wars uh, with Henry Chalfant, um, which that was a film in the graffiti art scene, like trying, trying to find a copy of uh, style wars on the West coast, particularly was just impossible uh, being able to, to show that to people and be like, you know, here's this historical, uh, you know, gem um, is, is, is a great feeling. Um, so wait, real quick about Star Wars. Um, did they all disappear because um, didn't, didn't Lucas, uh, he took them all, he had them all destroyed or put away in a, dumped in a crater in the middle of the desert somewhere or something like that? Didn't he, uh, mm -hmm. how, come, how come no Star Wars original VHS exists? Well, I have Betamax. <laughs> like they, they all sort of did the original Star Wars VHS and Betamax. Yeah. Like, what happened to what happened to them? What happened? Did aliens come down and they take all I the original mean, ones? I, I mean, I feel like you're mixing up the ET Atari game. No, well, Star Wars. Well, after they did the no, because it was like, um, but that's actually a good fact of it too. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, you're probably you're right. Yeah, I remember the story now. As, <laughs> as, <laughs> think it's like because like <laughs> as, <laughs> so funny. Um, uh, because when Lucas came out with the with a special editions or the when they re released it with the new special effects, yes, yeah, so, so much shit around. Um, uh, I think he there was a he made a, a situation. He kind of like got rid of all the original versions of that no hmm. maybe, i mean maybe. He, he, i think there was something about him saying don't sell those anymore and <laughs> so they weren't they, they weren't allowed to sell their remaining units so they had to dump the remaining units but it wasn't like they were going around the country and buying up copies <laughs> and then burning them or something like that bill cosby did Oh, I was saying Bill Cosby did that with Amos and Andy on VHS and went and bought as many copies as he could. He bought all the 16 millimeter prints from the TV stations. And I can't remember if he vaulted them or burned them. Maybe both. Oh, well, he's, a, he he's a real jerk. <laughs> well, it's on that, but. Uh, well, that was yeah. one of the least offensive things he's done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it comes to yes. mind. <laughs> um, well, maybe back then people could see where it was going. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have. That's when they should have thrown him in jail the first time. <laughs> maybe when he did that. Um, so wait, there's so much to. I want to talk. So, are there any copies of the original Star Wars that you can see? Uh, yeah, I, I told you I have the trilogy on Betamax and VHS. No, but like on, a, on, a, on a on a on a you got a laser disc? Yeah, I've got laser disc. Holy shit! Of the original, and uh, I and I think I have the laser disc in the special edition, or maybe just one or one or two of them. But I have the originals on laser disc too. Do you think they'll come out with a uh, a um, they'll redo the special effects for all the ones that they redid the special effects for, and then make it new again? <laughs> Like even better, like like avatars. We actually, 
they actually already have up with them to 4K for streaming on Disney Plus. So is way it, ahead of you there. Way ahead of you there. <laughs> like, um, so, okay. The, I, 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 there was a question here, but I want, there's so much about videos, but like, um, do you think, I want to, I'm kind of bouncing around because I got two different ideas I want to say at the same time. Okay. It's, um, so with refacing and all these different things that they have right now, I think, and this is a Breath of the Woods exclusive, my prediction is that you will be able to be in any movie you want. You will be able to be Luke Skywalker in the full thing with all your friends. You'll cast it with your mom. With oh, your dad, sure. All these things you'll cast. That'll be monetized. And, Absolutely. And uh, you'll, you'll be literally in the movie as those yeah. characters. Yeah. You are the star. Basically. So is that... Movie. Is um, how far away is that? It's Not exponential. Far. So, I mean, I'd say within five years, you're going to start seeing people uh, release products where you're in it. Um, video games will probably, uh, well, they've already experimented with that. Um, obviously, for older films, studios that decide which titles they want to release like that we'll be able to monetize on individual title basis, buy an individual title or franchise basis. You know, uh, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Like all your friends will be in, and uh, like I'll be Iron Man and yeah. like, you know, you'd be Captain America or something. Yeah. And we and, watch the movie with us as those people. <laughs> not a problem. That's not, the one thing is that this is where they're going to have to really, because that idea, obviously if I thought about it, you know about the idea. It's already uh -huh. been like, the people that actually have the, the the wherewithal and the actual ability to do those things have already been working on them. So mm -hmm. um, the one yes. thing is they'll have to do the voices, like like have your voice instead uh, of your voice. That takes more complicated AI that just isn't. It's just not. But, too but what do the people participate in it by reading the the script? Oh well, that, yeah, that's more time consuming. But yeah, imagine. Yeah, if they read the, if they acted out the script, it's a big, be awful though. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't it it know. would have to be like you would say, you would read, <laughs> excuse me, they, you would read a paragraph, a pre selected paragraph that captures all the uh, tonation needed for your language. Okay. Then run it through an AI that would process it based on the script and it would generate the script by the audio file. You know, it would actually read the, the words in the audio file and then it would lay in the audio track. That's just a stem, that's a stem audio track that could be uh, swapped out on the stream. So you can literally stream it, you know, you upload your voice reading this paragraph and a scan of your face with whatever third-party device that you use to scan your face. Xbox used to have the Kinect. Uh, PlayStation has the Eye. Uh, or you can use a webcam on a desktop or laptop. Basically, you upload those two files and everybody processes it. If you had to sit there and read the whole script, nobody, nobody would really do it. You know, it, it needs to be would. processed. I bet they but would. It's not there yet. I bet they. I I bet they would. I give the audience a benefit of the doubt. If they can be that way, they'll do it. I the, uh, people are, have their own studios in their in the palm of their hands. They're 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 doing things. They're devoting oh, time to this to these, you know, this invisible yeah. audience. I don't know who my audience is here, but I keep on making these. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying these things. But I don't know. There's people don't push the likes as much as they should, or I don't even know what like you know who care you know I'm not. It's like monetizing this is not even in my brain. Right. But uh, it would be good for to uh, you guys subscribe. I'm getting used to this thing. Subscribe and push those likes buttons and share. But um, I, with that being said, um, let's go back to this art, uh, this videos question real quick. Who oh. got, who got all the videos, uh, the videotapes? Who who got the acquisition? Who who oh. where those where I those mean, where where that uh, library go to? I mean, they were selling them to to uh, the public for months um, early on when it was really switching over to DVD. And I was there, I was there during that time. 
And I believe, I believe I probably purchased or just acquired because we got new copies, uh, eight or 900, probably like eight or no, 900 it was you. titles. So it was no, you. no, because there were, no, because there were 27,000, <laughs> you know, VHS, something like that. I mean, the racks went from floor to ceiling. It was like 14 foot ceiling. So, but those videotapes they, will not um, last in time. <laughs> they were the, when they built no, them, they weren't made to last. Like what? No, and, and, you know, when they opened in 1985, there were still copies we were keeping on the shelf in 2000. That literally every time somebody's machine would eat the tape, we'd have to take apart the tape and splice the tape smooth again so that it would read in the next play on the next playback and then we'd have to test them you know and yeah play them back there were a few of us that were that knew how to do that and would, would repair tapes as needed you know usually we'd build a pile like oh these all came back crunched up a lot of times it's the same person too is like it didn't work on your first tape why'd you put in all five tapes you rented yeah <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah destroying and, and some of these were like really rare, you know, and it was before a time that the owners were thinking about digitizing. I, I talked to them about it because I was doing digitization myself at home on desktops and, you know, off the shelf. Oh, <laughs> so these tapes would just get mangled and, you know, uh, Criterion okay. Collection DVDs get scratched, you know, and they don't make any more of them. You know, I know when you're, you probably don't remember, but I remember when, um, uh, they were first selling the ideas of uh, CDs, and these people would be like talking about this new technology, CDs. And this guy uh, was on a talk show, and he's all, "Look, you can sit on it; it doesn't break. You can bend it; it doesn't bend. You can let, you can try to scratch it with sandpaper; it doesn't scratch. It's it's amazing." And yeah. uh, that's what we were sort of sold on the idea, I think, of, uh, because those things are like, you know, once they get scratched, it's bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's well, the, at, at, at that point, at that point, they didn't even know about the ink printing, cracking and peeling off, which keeps the laser from reflecting off the, you know, through the data on the disc that's sandwiched in the disc and burned in, right? So uh, that happens even if you don't scratch them with sandpaper, or, you know, just a little bit of grit in, in the case or something, you know? Uh, yeah, they just deteriorate. Eventually, the plastic uh, pieces peel, and it, I mean, then it's it's totally yeah, gone. It's a, yeah, it's you gone. Know? yeah. Uh, did you ever have a disc Walkman? Oh, many. Yeah, I see, and I skateboarded, so like every time I, you know, ate it or something, they pop off. And the clip would pop off, and it'd skid across into traffic, and a bus would roll over it, or. Uh, I, I, I land on it like it was like hip armor, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Use it as a buffer. It might smash the, the CD inside as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, good times. <laughs> so, what's it like? Uh, where do you? What's the we got? If I can keep it for another twenty to fifteen to twenty minutes, I know it sounds long, but okay. we've already gotten forty minutes. It's going by fast. Uh, where do you see uh, the future of media, film? Do you like film? anymore uh do you like hour and a half two hour films is it worth because we're also uh going for these immediate bites and like now like a lot of like I, i'm a cinephile i love movies trust me i grew up on it was the reason i do the things i do today at form and shape but i've um i found that i've come become now a little complacent with it and not really um I, the love isn't there, but I have a singular vision for Return to Sender, which is the film, my feature film. Uh, I have a, I still think that's a feature, you know, that hasn't changed from that, right? But like, but like, I still want to do that. But is the lure of a cinematic experience even what people want to do these days? I mean, I mean, most, most don't. You know, it's, and that's by design for the fact that, you know, the theater was a way to spectacle. You know, whether it was like... Something, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on one second. Something's wrong with your audio. Really? Are you... Are you... 
It sounds like a, you're in a tin can, or it might be the reception, but I just want to make sure before I go. Yeah, no, I've got, I've got a gigabit down fiber optics. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe it's just uh, us recording. Okay, so what do you think? Okay, so let's scratch that. Just uh, what were you th- continue? I'm sorry, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I want to make sure the audio is good. There will always be a place for cinephiles like ourselves and people who enjoy film and the cinematic experience, you know, seeing, you know, going to a theater, the smell of the popcorn, you know, the usher in the aisle, all these things that make up that experience. And the drive through is, is make a comeback thankfully. Uh, you know, drive through experience is, is, is such a great way to see a film. And here in Southern California, you know, we've got sunshine most of the year, uh, very little rain. So, yeah. perfect environment. So, for those uh, experiences, I, I think it's still there. And also, the spectacle of like the big budget, you know, they've got the Marvel films, the Star Wars films, and all these, right? Okay. I've seen those in, on a system in a screen that's much bigger than you could possibly have in your own home uh, is alluring as well. Uh, that being said, most people's, uh, you know, appetite. Is going to be consumed by smaller, shorter content, you know, uh, you know, from DIY videos to you know, stream streaming and, and all this. Um, look at any of your friends' kids and what they're watching. It's mostly streaming of people or videos, short videos of people like opening toys that they don't even want to own, you know, or uh, the unboxing. You know, I, I'm a I'm a fan yeah. of the unboxing for sure. I got a little. It's, I, was oh, like, it's, I, was, I, it's I, I haven't watched a lot of it, but yeah. I know of it. I like it, and yeah. uh, it just makes me feel funny inside when I when I just the thought of it. But yeah. also the MSRI thing is really funny to me. That, yeah, MSRI. Yeah, yeah. I remember Absolutely. when TikTok first came out too. I was like, because I, I was like, because I'm always looking for like a new thing. Like Facebook is is like somehow surviving and and evolving through this. But like where MySpace yeah. has not or Friendster. Yeah. You know, Friends, but we, tribes. But we, yeah, tribes. <laughs> holy shit! I don't, I don't even remember remember that. That's how old that is. Um, um, but like, um, we all have our own network now. We produce our own content. People, yeah. make, they make livings off of this, and mm-hmm. where it's not like, um, I don't know. It seems like where do you? Okay, where do you think it's going? But where also would you like to see it going? Well, for instance, earlier we were talking about putting yourself in the movie. And that goes along the lines of the AR and the VR experiences that are more engaging. They uh, give you, um, they put you in that world, right? And more of this transplanting into the world of sci-fi or fantasy or drama or comedy you know like that's that's going to be the the biggest uh drive i think for people you know content content wise and those will probably come in you know for short content and then you know get longer and longer um you know even even though these new technologies are coming up it's still this it, it's the same kind of argument as digital versus analog are we shooting on film or are we shooting digital? Uh, they both have their merit. They both have their uses. They both have their, it's a different, you know, different aesthetics. They're pros and their cons. They're not mutually exclusive. You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, some films absolutely should be shot on film. You know, uh, a lot of that has to do with, you know, the director, the producers, the cinematographer that want a particular look. But, just using filters isn't going to cut it, you know, uh, for, for a serious, you know, somebody who seriously wants to make film. Uh, other films, pictures, uh, need to be made in digital to get the effects. Because, you, you know, uh, our computers are a lot better than rotoscope, you know. <laughs> yeah, but still they have a, the rotoscope has a, has a language to it and a vibe to it when it's used. Sure. But that's that's part of the that's not the tool. See, and there's a difference that's part of the magic the though. And how the tool is used. That's why, you know, uh, somebody somebody using the same tool uh, can make uh, something that's brilliant and make something that's awful. 
you know, it's, yeah. it's just it's the tool. So it's, that's what I mean. Like storytelling isn't going anywhere. You know, the roots are still here. There's this who, you know, new canvases as it were to paint. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just new canvases. Or do you think, uh, uh, there are new, um, uh, ideas out there or just just reoccurring tropes that we use and regurgitate over years and years of film the hundred and plus whatever years we've been making movies do you think there's uh, any originality to be had or is it just the same archetypal sort of situations like Beowulf and your screen is locked but I know you can hear me yeah I can hear you okay so okay. I yeah the, the archetypal stuff is not going anywhere you know just with new heroes, new faces, same, same underlying stories, you know, uh, how you combine those archetypes together into a story is always interesting. There's a, a million combinations for that, a billion, trillion, you know, we certainly haven't explored them all. And as new uh, media, new mediums become available to explore those stories, uh, it just it just makes a more interesting tapestry, you know. Okay, um, I believe you. I love you. Um, I'm gonna try to get. We're, I'm gonna try to get five minutes, and then we're gonna. I'm trying to be. I haven't done this in a while. I it's been yeah. about three weeks, and so a little. But I think I can. I think there's gonna be not that many edits on this one, um, oh, which is not. very very nice and. I'm Chuck. Gonna, <laughs> um, but uh, we're okay. Well, next time we do this, you know, uh, I've got a lot of different backgrounds. So no, I like the natural. This is I like natural. I don't. Oh, next time we so a, a part two at some point. Good, we'll do another yeah. one. Yeah. Um, there's, okay. there's many more subjects to explore. <laughs> Top five movies of all time. You go. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, Top ten. I mean, in, in easier. I don't really do those. I do like top ten genres, like top ten spaghetti westerns. You know. Oh come on! Top top 10, what? Uh, okay, top, okay, top. okay, but this will. So we're breaking new ground here. This will be your first time. Like, come on, basic. You don't have to be exact. It's not like it's a too committal. It's too committal. Blazing Saddles, <laughs> Young Frankenstein. Dr. I mean, the, French Love. First, first one that comes to mind is uh, City of Austin. Le Cité des Enfants Perdus. You know, that's that's. Probably my favorite all-time film. One of them. Nice. But if I had a Desert Island film that I could watch over and over, it would probably be that. Uh, I mentioned Mandy earlier. That's pretty high on my list for the last really? couple of years. Yeah. Love it. So much what's fun. The, what's the last best movie you've ever seen? What's the last good movie you saw? Last good movie I saw. Let's see. I've been watching a lot of TV. Let's see the last film. Oh, I went back and watched Kill List by Ben Wheatley. Uh, that he did a, a field in England. Um, and High Rise. Have you seen High Rise? No. Definitely, definitely a director to check out. Ben Wheatley. Okay. Uh, Look at some trailers for like a field in England, uh, Kill List, and uh, uh, yeah, just all of them. Just look, look up trailers for all his all his films. <laughs> High Rise, High Rise was amazing. High Rise, okay. Um, yeah. Um, gosh, there's so much. Uh, wait, one more last question. What do you want to do with this coming year? This coming year? Yeah. Are there any projects uh, that you're working on that you could tell your audience? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, right now I'm designing a, uh, a series uh, for a tool company. Um, I won't mention which, but they're, you know, it's tools. Kind of be like a Mythbuster show. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. So it's like they're, you know, they're, Tearing down tools, basically. Like, oh shit, shooting out in Burbank. Um, that's not that exciting. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any features on my radar right now. I do a lot of music videos. I probably oh. have 
Um, oh, the last one that I did uh, production design uh, that's been released, I believe, is uh, uh, AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys uh, video um, called Love Song Love. And uh, it's got so it got like on CBS News and it's like had a write up on apartment living. And this woman was like, I want my kitchen to look exactly like this, it's basically pink everything. So my, my place was full of like pink cooking stuff, pink, you know, celebration cake stuff, you, you name it. Nice. <laughs> um, so that's, that's pretty fun. That's up on, uh, that's up on YouTube. How, um, did they, how do they find it on YouTube? What's the title? Oh, Love Song Love, AJ McLean. Oh, yeah. Uh, M-C-L-E-A-N. Backstreet Boys. Yeah. With the goatee, the bad boy. Nice. He always a bad boy. So this song is like total, total pop music. The last uh, album he did solo was all country music. Uh oh, you froze up there. Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. You're going to come back on the screen and start talking again. I can feel it. Um, soon. There they are. He's been, he's been doing this Vegas show for years and then like a cruise with Backstreet Boys. But he did a country album. Now he's back to like pop music. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. He's a nice guy to work with. But, uh, yeah, a lot of music videos. Um, Def Jam, Capitol, Warner Brothers, uh, Sony, uh, Universal Latino. <laughs> nice. Well, how do people, if they want to follow you on Instagram, how do they find you? Uh, ADD Theater. And I have my Instagram is, uh, is uh, all reviews of VHS covers of action and uh, you know, martial arts films, sci-fi films, you name it. Uh, it's the 80s B action films mostly. Right. And, uh, oh, and, and public service announcements and industrial films like you know, how to treat your diabetic dog or, but they have these covers. And so I'm reviewing just the cover, not the actual film. And they're all from my archive. But like I said, I've got thousands of VHS, DVDs, uh, you know, Blu-ray, Betamax, Laserdisc, CED, uh, Capacitance Electronic Disc. I don't know if you know about those. You just kind of uh, scrambled my brain there for a second. Yeah, they're, they're making vinyl records in a plastic, like floppy disk case. Oh fuck! You're getting they're, hardcore. They're, they're a diamond needles. They're, they you coat them in grease, but the grease dried up after about a year and a half, two years. So because the needle, you covered, the your, needle, you covered your floppy disk with grease. No, it came like that, but because oh. it was sealed, you you you'd have to take it apart to re-grease it if you wanted to keep using the video. Well, Bizarro. on that note, <laughs> I'd like to thank our, our special guest, Eric Kopatz, for being here. <laughs> I wish he had been on the call, actually. That'd be, that'd be interesting. Dude, no, we wouldn't have gotten anything done. That's true, too. Um, but it would have been interesting. <laughs> I think it's better because he can watch this and roll his eyes and go, it's sort of my thing. Yeah, and I was like, okay, well, you know, talk to Burt Reynolds. He did that a, a few different times. Dom DeLuise. Anyways, um, gosh, yeah. is there anything else that we should cover? How's your COVID? Did you get vaccine? Yeah, I got Johnson <laughs> Johnson one shot, baby. Yeah, baby, well, one um, shot. Okay, let's get out of here, man. What's uh? Thank you for being right. uh, on the show, Brando McClure. Thank you, thank you for having me. We'll do it again uh, sometime. We'll, we'll do cover, another, we'll do another episode. And we'll uh, more greased records and. You know, oh my my insect collection. You oh, know my. Yeah, we need to go there. <laughs> soon we'll do another one. We'll do. Um, I'm gonna get my 50th episode soon, and then I might have repeat customers after that. But, awesome. uh, hey man, great to catch up with you, dude. All right, likewise. Be well. I still want to borrow. Actually, I want to get a projector. So I gotta talk to you about that. Oh. Which one's the best? Yeah, absolutely. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, you guys. He talks to people about stuff. He's the podcast man.